This is the Thank You Ocean Report. Algae are little plants that grow in the ocean. Groups of them are called phytoplankton. Think of them as the grass of the sea, but sometimes they can produce harmful toxins. You may have heard two terms which refer to this type of event, red tides or harmful algal blooms. They're both used pretty commonly, and there's some issues with both of them. So red tides is a really good description of blooms that cause discoloration of the water, but harmful algal blooms can oftentimes have no color associated with them. Dr. Rafael Cudele is a professor of ocean sciences at the University of California at Santa Cruz. Here in California, most of our red tides are more or less harmless. They're discolorations of the water, but they're not producing toxins. However, they can cause skin and eye irritation. So there's increasing awareness that surfers and other people that are using the water a lot are actually sensitive to these red tides and can develop essentially an allergic reaction. Dr. Cudella says red tides are also a source of food for bacteria. And so we've actually been able to directly connect bacterial infections in humans, things like ear infections, to the fact that there was a red tide that stimulated more of the bacteria. These blooms come and go. They're just a natural part of the ocean. And so sometimes they're blooming and they can cause big problems. We oftentimes wonder, well, can we get rid of them? And probably not. They've been around for millions of years. But we do know that there are certain causes or implications for exacerbating these blooms, if you will. So if we get the right conditions, such as a lot of runoff or increased nutrient pollution from humans, this can actually stimulate the blooms more than they would occur naturally. And as such, they can become dangerous and toxic. Humans are putting excess fertilizers into the water, and that eventually runs into the ocean. We're getting a lot of these nutrients, things like nitrogen, coming into the rivers and coming into the streams from human use, either from agriculture or leaky septic systems or just overuse of things like garden fertilizer. And so just like we're seeing ocean acidification and potentially changes in temperature, we're also seeing just more and more of these impacts causing things like these potentially dangerous blooms in our coastal waters. Dr. Cudella and his colleagues, along with volunteers, do extensive monitoring in coastal waters looking for toxins in the water. They also collect weekly samples of shellfish. And that's a really good indicator because those are things that humans eat directly. And so working with the state of California, we're part of a network that keeps track of this and really makes sure that as long as you're following the guidelines, that humans in California are not going to be exposed to these toxins. And Dr. Cadella is really excited about a new grassroots effort called the Harmful Algal Bloom Monitoring and Alert Program, which involves citizen scientists and multiple state and federal agencies. The California Ocean Protection Council, the Ocean Science Trust here in California, with federal agencies like NOAA, we've actually been able to make a really big impact, even during periods when there's been pretty tight fiscal constraints. We're happy to engage the public, and to a large extent, we're using those volunteer monitoring networks to extend the reach beyond what we can do as scientists. My thanks to Dr. Rafael Cudella. And here are a few everyday actions that can help us minimize our impacts on red tides and ocean pollution. First, let's make sure to reduce our use of fertilizers. Inspect your septic system to ensure that it's up to code. If you see a sick or distressed marine mammal, contact the Marine Mammal Center in your area. And for more information about harmful algal blooms, please visit our website, thankyouocean.org. I'm Jerry Kay.